Hi everyone, welcome to my review of the Fat Free Grand Maestro. The Grand Maestro is the flagship IM of the Singaporean brand Fat Freak. Fat Freak is a short is a shortened form for fat frequency. And when I first came across this brand online, I wasn't sure how to pronounce it. But I went to Canjam, not just this past year in 2020, not just this year, 2024, but also in 2023. And that's when I ran into these guys. And I really enjoyed meeting these guys. I immediately picked up their IM and not this one, of course. I picked up an entry level IM from them. And I really enjoyed hanging out with Ben and the rest of the crew. But I hadn't I, I had my eyes on the Fat Free Grand Maestro even last year. Because I sort of felt that this is perhaps one of those IMs that does what I wanted to, that has very different tuning profiles. And honestly, it probably does anything anyone would want it to because the four different tuning profiles this has are just phenomenally different. I mean, they're not massively different, but they're different enough that they make a phenomenal amount of difference. Let me put it that way. So I will talk about the frequency response here. Something that I think I often ask you guys to take with a pinch of salt, but I will take you through what these sounds like with the vocal switch off, with the vocal switch on, with the blue module, uh, uh, with the vocal switch off, and the, with the blue module, with the vocal switch on. So with the vo by vocal switch, I refer to this little uh, toggle switch here, which is very easy to switch on and off. And you can do it on the fly while this is in your ear canal. So this is that's very convenient. And these NUA modules can be taken out and replaced with these ones. These are the black ones that are stock and these are the blue ones that are upgrade or rather side grade. Uh, you can buy additionally. If you buy the Fat Free Grand Maestro in its in most simplest form, just with the stock cable, not with this, the stock cable, this is the gold plated silver cable, right? With the stock cable and with only the black module, this will set you back $2,800. With the premium gold plated silver cable, which is this beauty that, that you see over here, which is also an aesthetic match with these IMs, and the Blue Noah modules, you'll be paying $3,334. Okay, so what do you get for this money? What do you get in terms of the driver setup? You get one dynamic driver for bass, you get eight BA drivers for mid-range, and you get four electrostatic or EST drivers for treble. And it sounds very, very cohesive. It sounds magnificent. So to jump right in, because I do want to talk about the graph, I do want to talk about you know sources I've driven it with because this is not easy to drive. So I'll talk about my Sony DAB, my Aroma Amp. I'll talk about my Ibasso PB5 Osprey and how it all sounds across these different sorts of setups. I mean, I'll also drop comparisons to my trusty sort of benchmark, the Aroma Audio Jewels, and my more recent sort of, I've, uh, this is fun finding a lot of favor with me, the Craft Ears Omnium, which is a proper flagship from this Polish company, Craft Ears, and a fantastic IM, this. And another fantastic IM from another newish sort of brand is the Flip Ears Aurora XXIV. Just look at these face plates. So all these will get reviews of their own, but I thought I would just talk about how the Fat Free compares to these other guys in the course of this review and I'll take the cable out so it's easier for me to you know, talk about this IM because the cable is absolutely fine. It sounds great. It's fairly ergonomic. It, it doesn't have a lot of memory. It looks very premium, good skin feel and no microphonics, but at the same time, talking about an IM and holding it up with its cable connected can become ever so slightly cumbersome. Okay, now to jump into the FR, this is what it, looks like in terms of its FR. So the basiest form of the Fat Free Grand Maestro is this blue line with this beautiful mound of bass that honestly speaking has a bit of mid bass. It doesn't really cut off until 300 hertz, but it's clean enough that you don't get enough, a lot of bleed into the upper mids or mids or mid mids. And with all these different tuning profiles, it does come down by 300 hertz as opposed to 200 hertz. And I think this is a better point at which to come down and, and sort of smooth out because by coming down at 300 hertz, you still have some preservation of mid-bass warmth and mid-bass energy, just, just enough so that the bass sounds more balanced. Then, of course, you have this upper mid pinna gain. The pinna gain is not over intrusive at all in relation to the bass. 
and it sounds lovely. I wouldn't want this pin again to be so in your face that it becomes shouty. You have treble, but this is where it doesn't sound like it graphs because after eight kilohertz, you have a peak here, and then you have a peak around possibly 12 and around 15, but these don't sound sharp by any stretch of the imagination. I've tried this with a variety of dApps, even my more bright neutral dApp, my Ibasso DX260, and this, this is not very audible unless you're very treble sensitive. And especially if you're using, I mean, this just, just it's not very audible, but what, it, what, what does happen with treble is that you get a lucid, lucid treble. Okay, so what, how, how, does, how do the tuning switches fare? Just to take you through it. So if you use the blue modules, right, which are often called the vocal modules, these, are, these sound the cleanest. And if you use this and have the vocal switch here switched off, then you get this yellow graph, which has the least amount of bass in relation to the upper mids. And if you zoom out, you will see this upper mids energy is greater than the bass energy. So it will sound far more neutral and, and more clarity oriented, and I dare say analytical. If you want a little more bass, you can use the green line. Or I mean, by using the green line, I mean you can use the black module and have the vocal switch on because then what happens is you get a fairly neutral sound signature, which I wouldn't say is analytical. And finally, if you use the vocal switch off and the blue module, you get more bass and you get this sort of a red line situation, which is bassier than I think neutral. And last but not the very least, if you use the black modules, which I have here and vocal switch switched off, which is how often I, I like it with rock and metal, you get a lot of bass. So you get four different tuning profiles ranging from analytical all the way to neutral, to bassy neutral, to bassy. Wonderful choices, wonderful options. Okay, now... Beyond all that, just to take you guys to what it sounds like to me, I, I've written some notes on this and I'll just read out some of my notes so you understand how excited I was to get this in. So this is me reading out some notes that I've written. The Fat Free Grand Maestro is a pretty phenomenal IEM, even considering its lofty price point of $3,334, including the upgrade cable and the Blue Noah modules. What I found particularly interesting is that although it has an incredible base shelf, because most of the energy is tucked away within sub bass, on most tracks, it actually sounds far less bassy than you might imagine, which is a good thing because it, that enhances the all-rounder credentials of these IEMs. What is also surprising is how well done the treble is. The treble region starts with a polite lower treble where most people tend to be sensitive to too much energy then proceeds to a tasteful dollop of mid treble and exactly the right amount of upper treble energy that renders the presentation airy and spacious without overdoing it and without introducing fatigue. The mids are transparent, present and detailed offer up nuances and textures and voices and instruments, which is usually rare for IMs that do bass and treble so well. I suppose you would call it a W-shaped IM, sort of, but the vocal switches in off position and the bass shape black modules in play can change things. Overall, a standout IM, no doubt, that also looks and feels premium, right from the shell design to the brand lettering to the quality of the upgrade cable Kudos factory. Okay, so that's it. That's those were the notes I wrote after I got this in and I posted this on HeadFi. Guys, I am in love with this, and I do think you'll be too. I do want to talk about how this sounds with you know when amped differently. Uh, so with the Sony W1ZM2, which is not your most powerful amp in the business, but it does the job. I've even preferred driving the Subtonic Storm with this. The Subtonic Storm is a benchmark for how difficult an IM may be able maybe to drive. And I like the Subtonic Storm with my Sony ahead of a lot of other more powerful dApps because synergy matters. Of course, I end up cranking this up all the way to perhaps 90% of his driving uh, ability. But the Subtonic Storm sounds nice. So that is the same with the Grand Maestro. I would recommend the Sony with the Grand Maestro. 
However, the Sony does render the presentation warmer and slightly richer, and it does sound lovely to me. But if you want something faster and, and you know, perhaps quicker in transients, this daisy chain with the Sony, the Aroma 800 TB, makes the presentation tighter and dare say a little more impactful in the bass and like slightly more, uh, slightly quicker transients, but it's perceptible. And the sound stage gets pushed back further because the Grand Maestro does have amazing sound stage. That's another huge party trick of this IM that I haven't talked about. Now I'm talking about it. Sound stage wise, guys, these are kings. Now, if you want to sort of play around the sound stage and get a wider instead of a deeper sound stage, and again, a richer sound, and, and even bassier sound, then these guys are your friend. The PB5 Osprey with their wonderful four cork new tubes, now they're you know shining in all their glory, makes everything sound bigger, more bombastic and bassier. And someone has measured this too and found out that this adds about a 3 dB bass shell. So imagine adding a 3 dB bass shell to the Fat Freak and also a richer mid-range and a wider stage. It is just party time, guys. It sounds amazing. I wouldn't be able to tell you if the PB5 sounds better than the Aroma because I do think they're very contrasting sound signatures. And last but not the least, to take you guys through some comparisons of the Fat Freak vis-a-vis -vis some of my other favorite IMs, starting with my benchmark for IM performance, which is the Aroma Audio Jewels. Uh, now paired with the flash acoustics Catalina cable, I'm yet to take these plastic wrappers off, which is what it is. Guys, this is my favorite I am, but the Fat Freak, I do think, match them for overall performance and quality of sonic reproduction because the Fat Freak is bassier. And if you're craving more bass because the Jules bass is not doing it for you, the Jules bass does have to be tinkered with, and I have tinkered with it quite a bit to make the Jewel more bassy using tips, cables, and sources. You need no tinkering with this. This is just bassier and might work better for rock, metal, hip hop, etc. Mid-range is perhaps where I would give the Jewel a slight, a slight, a slight, a bit, a bit of an edge because it's a little more organic sounding in mid-range. Treble-wise, guys, it's a toss-up because this has some of the best treble in the business, as does this. This perhaps sounds airier. This has better imaging. This is a wider sound stage. This has more dynamics. This, I think, is slightly better timbrely. So it's, it's honestly a toss-up. I do think they're equal level IMs, but I, I do think the Jewel is ever so slightly more resolving. That being said, the Jewel is $5,200. This is only $3,400. Only $3, but it is a better value proposition in that sense compared to the Jewels. And, you know, it's a more modern IM, and, and you have the tweakability and tuning options. A lot of you might prefer this over the Jewel. Uh, I do want to make a couple more comparisons. These are the Flip Ears Auroras, which are just amazing IMs. Uh, priced just above $2,000, around $2,500. These are a flagship from the Filipino brand Flip Ears. I really want you guys to check this out because these are unsung and these are fantastic. Also very bassy. And I do think they're similar in a lot of what they do. Uh, again, I would take the Grand Maestro ever so slightly over this because I perceive the Grand Maestro to be you know, just more versatile in the tuning profile options. But I do have to disclaim that I haven't heard the Aurora with as much attention and, and, and you know, uh, uh, as, with as much time as I have the Grand Maestro. So this, that will get its own review. And last but not the least, the Craft Ears Omnium at 2,500 euros, which is priced similarly to the Fat Freak in the stock form, I do think are contender. And I do think they're somewhat equally uh, uh, performing IMs. This, the party trick here is it's wonderful uh, mid-range. It, it has a planar mid-range. And if you just pick up more nuances with this mid-range than I have, than ever have with any other IM on the planet. This also has some lucid treble and some really nice sub bass. But this is bassier. This is a more bombastic. And this is a wider sound stage. This, I think, is more textured in the mid-range, more natural in the mid-range, and has uh, uh, just this amazing separation between foreground and background vocals and foreground and background instruments and imaging as well. But they're equally, I think, uh, uh, performing, so to speak. So that's it, guys. The Fat Freak Grand Maestros are here to stay. Uh, some of you have ranked them in the past and talked about them as, you know, them being the number one items on the planet. And I see why. And I do think they'll continue to be relevant for a long time, if not forever. Because an item of this caliber, of this sort of aesthetics, of this build quality, of this tweakability, I don't think will ever get old. And before I finish, I just want to take you through the uh, very quickly through the unboxing because it is a bit special. 
So first and foremost, you get this a blue, rather heavy shoe box. And there's a way in which the outer uh, 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 cover will come off. And I'll just show you what you get inside. The outer cover comes off and you get the logo emblazoned in gold. And then just shoebox style. This will also come off. And you get this exquisite wooden box with the Fatrick logo. This is just really, really beautiful. And, and yeah, I can't rave enough about how beautiful this is. I just love it, guys. And of course, you can open it. And this is the sort of presentation you're greeted with. You get this beautiful gold colored hockey puck case for your IMs. This compartment opens up and you get this card that says welcome to the family. And you get tips. Of course, you get a cleaning equipment right here. The tips are sparse, but you'll have to make do with your own tips at this level because there are all these awesome aftermarket trips that can be had. For instance, I'm pairing it with the Pentagon Courier trip tips just because this gives me a little more sharpness in attack. And you can, of course, uh, uh, use different terminations with your IMs if you choose. So you have your choice of terminations. Um, so this is basically where the blue modules, uh, uh, you know, come. So that is the unboxing. It is extraordinarily premium affair. And I have enjoyed every last moment of my time with this. And I'll continue to right after this video because Fat Freak has a winner on their hands. And I dare say a legend on their hand that will continue to impress people over the next several years. So that's it for me, guys. I hope this review was useful. If it was, give my video a like, follow my channel, and stay tuned for my next one. Bye-bye.